name is Jeffrey Ndali, also known as Tamani. I'm an IT professional and a musician. I was born and raised in Madar Slums in Nairobi, Kenya, and I currently live and work in Europe. Before then, I used to work and live in Nairobi. About two years ago, in 2015, I had a court case, and the case was brought about by a post I made on Facebook. And the accusations were based on uh, Section 29 of Kenya Information and Communications Act, which is about improper use of system. And in this case, I was using Facebook, which is a licensed system. Basically, the section talks about uh, sending or publication of information that uh, may be untrue, false, or grossly offensive. And uh, I was accused for that. Uh, the story was about uh, two individuals from an organization based in Madar Islams, uh, where I was born and raised. Individuals who are abusing their offices. Uh, these uh, guys were working for a community-based organization based in Madar. And this organization was supposed to help uh, young, needy and bright students to get scholarships for higher education. And uh, these guys were apparently asking for sexual favors from these girls uh, for them to get opportunities to go to school. And when I heard about that, and this had been talked about even in the community, even the parents had heard about the stories, but some of them were afraid to approach it or maybe to, they were afraid that the girls might lose uh, scholarship opportunities. And some of these uh, people are really poor and they really depend on such uh, aid. So they really have to get someone out or maybe a, a voice from elsewhere to talk on their behalf. So I decided to post it on Facebook just to uh, help these girls and also uh, sensitize people on what was going on in the community. And some of them already knew actually, but they even never went to the police or anywhere to help stop this. So when I learned about uh, me being accused uh, for this post, I approached some of my colleagues. Actually, at that time I was working at Kenya Law, so I had many lawyer friends whom I could approach for uh, legal advice. And all my friends, uh, Daniel Chiel, advised me to approach Article 19 uh, for further legal advice and action uh, towards this case. So at one time we went together with Daniel to Article 19. We approached them with this story and uh, the case, told them everything we knew about uh, the case and the post I had made and they shared a lot of uh, advices and uh, finally we decided on a petition and they came in as an interested party. So at Conantin provided lawyers for me who could uh, help with the drafting of uh, submissions and uh, a petition and I was working closely with Riva and Delmas. Uh, Delmas was also actually attending my court cases also to uh, support and also for the submissions. And uh, after a few uh, hearings and mentions, the judge uh, handling this case declared the section unconstitutional. I was really happy because honestly I thought to myself, are these people that accused me were not happy because I mentioned them in this and they, they had done something that was wrong in the, in the society and they, were, they kept doing this thing for, for years and for several times they did this and the girls were suffering from this. So. In their case, they were not happy because they posted this. But what about the girls who are suffering? The girls who suffered in their hands because of their actions. So actually, uh, the removal or the, the declaration of that section on constitutional was really useful for many people. And even the bloggers and uh, journalists who have been arrested and prosecuted because of this section of the act uh, really benefited from this. And many people uh, were happy about this because it's a uh, it's sort of, it was depriving people of uh, the constitutional right of speech. I'd like to thank Article 19 for continuing to fight for human rights. I'd like to thank Article 19 for standing with the people and for the people. I'd like to wish Article 19 a happy 10th anniversary.